Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be me discussing a plot hole from Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time. If you're new to the channel, I release a video every weekend, Saturday or Sunday, and I discuss plot holes, theories, I debunk some theories, and basically anything lore lore-wise for Crash Bandicoot. So if that's something you'd be interested in, I'd really appreciate if you throw me a subscribe. Most people that are watching my videos are not subscribed to the channel, and if you subscribe, it'll help my channel grow and fight the algorithm monster. So with all that being said, let's jump back into the plot hole of Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. So if you're not familiar with the character on the screen, which I don't know how you wouldn't be if you're a Crash Bandicoot fan, this is Tiny Tiger. He is a Tasmanian Tiger mutant soldier that Cortex created. He has appeared in almost every single Crash Bandicoot game, save for Crash Bandicoot 1 in 1996. However, he was originally planned to be in the first game. If we look at a page from the Crash Bandicoot Bible that was released a couple years back, Tiny was clearly already planned and supposed to be in Crash Bandicoot 1. It was called Willy the Wombat at that point in time. And Tiny's name was just Tasmanian Tiger. I think what ultimately happened was there was already way too many bosses in the game, so they decided to hold off and put Tiny in Crash Bandicoot 2. So that's a little background history on Tiny the Tiger. This is Tiny in Crash Bandicoot Warped when he went back to ancient Rome. He's got his gladiator helmet, gladiator armor on his arm, and his uh, pitchfork behind him there. And this is Tiny from Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. And as you can see, he looks almost identical to the Bible picture there. This is from uh, the Insane Trilogy version of Crash Bandicoot 2, so it's been updated visually. So those are really the only two appearances. He's got the spikes on his shoulder, or he's got the gladiator armor. And um, now we're going to go into Crash Bandicoot 4, and where you saw his cameo. He didn't physically appear in the game, but there was a cameo. So if you go back to the world map, and you go to Cortex Island in 1996, so this is set pre-Crash Bandicoot 1. Spoilers for Crash Bandicoot 4. If you don't want to hear these spoilers, jump ahead 20 seconds. Cortex decides to go back in time to before he created Crash Bandicoot to stop himself from creating him so he would never have Crash to, def to thwart his many plans. So if you go into the level Cortex Castle in 1996 and look at the wall directly to your right, you will see a portrait of Tiny Tiger. So, like I said, he did not have a physical appearance in the game, but this is a cameo. And he's in his gladiator gear. You can see he's got the helmet, the pitchfork, and his, arm, or his shoulder, at least, is covered in the armor. But that doesn't make sense. This is the plot hole. If we're back in 1996, before the events of Crash Bandicoot 1, Tiny should have his original appearance because he has not yet gone back in time to ancient Rome. However, he has his Crash Bandicoot 3 design. So, that's the plot hole, everyone. Tiny Tiger, as he appears in the portrait, in 1996 should not have the appearance of Gladiator Tiny from 1998. So, uh, the only way around this plot hole would be to say, hey, it's all time travel, wibbly-wobbly stuff, so maybe 1998 Cortex went back in time and put a portrait up of 1998 Tiny the Tiger back in 1996. But I don't think that's the case. I think this was just them making a, an error, and they used the wrong uh, costume for Tiny. But anyway, everybody, that's the entire plot hole video. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, if you think that you know some other people that will enjoy it, share the video. I'd appreciate some comments and, you know, 
Let's get a conversation going. Do you know any other plot holes in Crash Bandicoot 4 that I could cover in a future video? Anyway, everybody, you have a great night. Take care.